Other times, the portrait is God loves everybody, and he wants everybody's salvation, but when they reject him, he lets them go, and hell is where God is not. It is a place of sorrow and suffering, and if somebody rejects the love of Jesus, fine. You have what you want, and what they want is hell. Okay, let's... um. Okay, it's noon already, so I'm going to do the gospel reading, and then we're going to close singing My Hope is Built. We're going to skip My Hope is Built for right now. We're going to come back and sing it. All right, so the gospel reading is from the gospel of Luke, chapter 13, verses 31 through 35. You can find it on page 1460 in your pew Bibles. Listen again to the word of God. Yes, I want you to read. Thank you, Sarah Beth. Golly. The same day there came certain of the Pharisees, saying unto him, Get thee out, and depart hence, for Herod will kill thee. And he said unto them, Go ye and tell that fox, Behold, I cast out devils, and I do cures today and tomorrow, and the third day I shall be perfected. Nevertheless, I must walk today and tomorrow and the day following, for it cannot be that a prophet perish out of Jerusalem. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, which killest the prophets, and stonest them that are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, as a hen doth gather her brood under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate, and verily I say unto you, ye shall not see me until the time come when ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. The word of the Lord. This last bit that he just said, you shall not see me until the time come when you shall say, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. That's a scriptural reference to Psalm 118 when it's talking about the Messiah coming on the day of judgment. So this is a threat. He's saying, you're going to see me as long as I'm around and that's not up to you, that's up to God. And when you see me again, it's going to be too late for you. You're toast. Okay, that's pretty much what he's saying here. It's, it's, a, it's not so veiled threat if Herod knows his scriptures. So this begins with Herod making a threat about him, a threat towards him, saying, I'm going to kill you if you don't get out of here. And is Jesus intimidated by this? No. He says, you go tell that fox. That's fighting words. You go tell that fox, I'm going to keep exercising demons, I'm going to keep healing for a couple days, then I'm going to move along when I want, okay? That's pretty much what he says here. I know I just put it in, like, hick terms, but that's pretty much what he says here because he's not afraid of Herod. Why? Connected to what we've been talking about. Why is he not afraid of a, an enemy threatening him? He's in God. He's with God. There is nothing to fear. His enemies cannot do anything to him. God has a plan. Herod can't interrupt it. Herod is the most important, powerful guy in the region. He cannot do anything to Jesus that the Lord has not already ordained. He cannot harm Jesus. So Jesus is not at all intimidated. He's not at all Upset about this, you know, he, when he's saying, you go tell that fox, he's not, you go tell that fox, he just, you go tell that fox. I'm not afraid of him. I'm going to do what I want, when I want, then I'm going to move along, and I know the Lord's plan is that I am going to die in Jerusalem. And I'm going to go do that, because that's the plan. So he's not at all intimidated. And then he has this interesting discourse, Jerusalem. Jerusalem. He's sad in tone. How often have I wanted to care for you as a hen protects her chicks under her wings, but you wouldn't have it. Look, your city is now left to you desolate. He condemns this whole city. And really what he's condemning is all the people of the world whom he has invited to be in his embrace and who have rejected him. Christians throughout all the years of our faith, you know, sometimes the notion of hell is that God is like angry, and he just punishes everybody that he doesn't like, and he sends them to hell. Other times, the portrait is God loves everybody, and he wants everybody's salvation. But when they reject him, he lets them go. And hell is where God is not. It is a place of sorrow and suffering. And if somebody rejects the love of Jesus, fine. You have what you want, and what they want is hell. That's why zombie movies are always tragic. <laughs> what they want is hell, you know? And what people who don't love Jesus and don't follow Jesus want is hell. 
And that seems to be the attitude here. Jerusalem, I would have saved you. I would have taken care of you. I don't, I don't hate you. I, I would have let, but you chose not to be with me, and I'm going to let you make that choice, and destruction is your end because your God is the belly. That's what is still unfolding before our eyes even today. Day by day, Christ is making his case through the church to a world that is going, la, 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 I do not want to hear. Don't want to hear about that other way of life. Don't want to hear about the purpose of life. I want to believe that my best life is now and you only live once and I got to live by my bucket list and do all the things that I want before I'm too old and I die because then it's over. That's, that's how people want to live and that is... Uh, an affront to Jesus. That is no way for anyone to live. True abundant life has been extended to all men, and we've been given this time to offer it to everybody. And not all the zombies are going to wake up. In fact, I don't think most of them are. But God is going to wake a lot of them up. And are we going to be there when it happens? Are we going to be issuing the words of invitation and comfort? Are we going to have the courage to live boldly, not fearing our enemies? but trusting that God is in control and his plan will prevail. Church, will you believe in God? Church, will you trust his plan? These are easy softball questions. Church, will you trust God's plan? Church, will you live boldly? Church, are you going to fear your enemies? Church, are you going to love your enemies? Church, when you leave this place, are you going to minister to the zombies? That was a harder one, I know. And some of you are still shaking your heads at me going, stop with the zombies, okay? I'm not going to talk about zombies next week. But if you didn't like it, let it bother you some more. I know we love zombies. We don't want to look at them as zombies. But unless you learn to look at them that way, you're not going to feel the gravity, the the intensity you need to feel at, at, at praying for God's salvation for them. If you don't see something as broke, you're never going to fix it. And this world's broken. And it needs healers, peacemakers. And that's what God has raised us up to be. Amen.